Earlier I posted a video analyzing the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, which is this building right here, using Physics Toolkit. This is a remake using a much higher quality version of the video. What this software allows us to do is take a video and as we step through it we can put um, a marker on some point and follow it through the video. Okay? These markers then are uh, cataloged in the data table and can be used to create graphs and do, do analysis. Now, in order to make this uh, significant, you have to convert from the pixel locations to actual uh, real, real world distances. And so you need to calibrate this somehow. Now, the easiest way to calibrate this based on published data is to use the width of the World Trade Center Building 7 itself. And this turns out to be just about exactly 100 meters. Uh, actually, the FEMA report calls it 329 feet. And if you convert 329 feet to meters, it's 100.27 meters. So whether the 329 is a rounded off number or the 100 meters is a rounded off number is a little bit hard to tell. Turns out it's not very significant. What's a little bit more significant is the left edge of this building is in the smoke, and so we have to estimate the position. You can see uh, vaguely where it is. And so what we're going to do is do this a couple of times uh, with different um, different guesses, uh, an overestimate and an underestimate to see the effect of that on the results. Because we want to try and get realistic results for the acceleration of this corner of the building as it comes down. Okay. Now I've already placed the dots because that uh, requires care. And so I've used a magnifying glass and I've used a consistent um, criterion. So like for instance, look, look at the cursor and when the cursor is on a dark background it looks sort of white and on a light background it looks sort of dark. And so I went down until the first place where it turned white and I used that each time uh, for the location of the pixel. So I tried to uh, be right on that corner in a consistent manner. Okay, Let's go through and estimate the the distance across this building. So if I just let it turn white there, what I need to do is click the scale and then uh, this will allow me to place the, the calibration mark. So if I go from there and I come across to, uh, I'm going to go a little bit long this time and let's it come out to about here. So that's sort of beyond, well, that's actually pretty much dead on I think. I'm using uh, right in here uh, the I'll go with what looks like it's an extra pixel or two, I think. Okay. Now we type in the distance, and I'm going to put 100 meters. In fact, if I put in 100.27, I'm going to take FEMA's data literally. Okay. All right. So now, if I step through it, notice this uh, calibration factor here, the scale factor is 1.55 this time. So I'm going to hit Next and next, and I'm going to say it's in the y direction, which is vertical. And I'm going to measure position and velocity. Now I can get a data table if I want to do this numerically right here. But mainly what I want to do is look at the graph of velocity versus time. And let's uh, see what the slope is. If I left click on the first data point and right click on the last data point, it gives us a slope, minus 10.223. And the slope of a velocity versus time graph gives you acceleration. Now, notice that there's a plus or minus over here. Plus or minus is about 0.6. And so minus 10 is actually faster than free fall. Free fall is minus 9.8. Uh, this is actually looks a little faster than free fall. It's right about at free fall, really. Uh, 0.6, the margin of error would overlap 9.8. So in other words, the minus sign indicates it's coming down. 9.8 indicates it's falling at the acceleration of gravity. Free fall with zero resistance. And so what we have here, this is almost the first three seconds of uh, the collapse. And the line that's been put through here is what they call the best fit straight line. So it calculates what's the best line to go through all these data points here. The reason there's a little jumpiness is because you can only measure to the nearest pixel. And if you notice on the, let's come back here, notice the, okay, I did one other video showing um, the horizontal speed of a, a plume being ejected from the North Tower. 
Uh, this is another one. This is used. This is based on Rick Siegel's um, video uh, taken from the Frank Sinatra Pier near Hoboken, and I calibrated this by uh, looking on a map and figuring out the angle and figuring out the distance from uh, this building here to this side of the world of the World Trade Center number seven, and I've got a very good calibration that way. So in any case, I'm following uh, one plume that's coming this way, and I'm, uh, I'm measuring it in relation to this point because uh, the camera is uh, moving around while we uh, while we videotape here. Okay, let's uh, step through this. I've already placed all the points, so uh, that'll speed it up a little bit. So you can see the the camera was panning around a little bit um, while I was moving, but since we're going to uh, do this in terms of relative motion, that's not an issue. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to take the relative motion option number nine. We're going to look at the x direction of motion, and we're looking at the first data set, the red dots, uh, in relation to the green dots, which is the second data set. And I'll just take position versus time. And the slope of that line would give us the velocity. All right. And so here we go. This is uh, position versus time. Uh, the second graph uh, shows the same thing, except it's um, using displacement, uh, and it just sort of spreads the data out a little bit better. So let's use this one. Uh, the slope can be calculated here. And let's move this up so we can see it. Okay, uh, the, the slope that we got here uh, fitting the data uh, is uh, 31.9 meters per second. Let's bring up the calculator. Okay, um, here I have 31.9 uh, meters per second. That's our speed in metric units, 31.9. And then if I go times uh, the stored constant here, it says memory recall and say equals comes out 71.35, so upward of 70 miles an hour. This is very consistent with the other uh, ejection speed from the other video. Uh, it's a different plume going in a different direction, uh, still from the North Tower. Okay, for comparison, here's the full speed 30 frames per second uh, collapse of the North Tower. Uh, this is from Rick Siegel's video footage. On the left, you can see the ejection that we tracked, and that's where we got this 70 mile an hour result.